Okay. So uh, the next topic that um, I'm going to discuss is how do you automate real user scenarios across multiple applications and multiple devices? What does this title even mean? Let's start with that. This is like a top tip. That, of course, yes, but it is more involved than just top of the pyramid. No, it's end to end anyway. Anything at the top is end to end. But 2FA could be part of this in some ways. Uh, so I'll, I'll uh, tell you how this goes, right? The real user is anyway, we understand that. Anyway, whatever automation we do, it should be simulating real user scenarios. You don't want to just think of scenarios that are not going to exist and automate those, right? It's based on what a user can or cannot do. That's how you would validate the functionality if everything is working fine. So what does that really mean? Why do we automate tests? As we just said, simulating user actions, user behavior of interactions with your product and making sure everything continues to work fine. But how do we do that? We understand your application, the application under test, and it could be based on different platforms it is available on, web, mobile, web, native applications, or desktop applications, it could be anything, right? We understand the application under test. Based on that, we identify the scenarios. Okay, now we are talking at the top of the pyramid, right? This is not test cases, these are scenarios we are talking about. And that is what ideally we would automate the top priority ones, because again, these are very expensive to automate. Uh, and the more wider the scenarios, the more chances of flakiness uh, in the test execution because any small change in the whole ecosystem can cause that test to fail abruptly. So you want to prioritize these well, the top priority ones, P0s, P1s, definitely you want to automate. The rest you want to try and again push it lower in the pyramid as much as you can. But once you have these scenarios identified and prioritized, you would want to automate. How do you automate it? It's a solved problem. Use any tool for automation based on the skill sets, context, uh, and money that the organization has to purchase the license, if at all, and you would automate that. And there are a ton of products that you will have in that open source and commercial and freeware uh, products as well. I came up with another option that you could use. And that was for a uh, reason, not just because again, I write to write, I like to write code or build frameworks. So I'm building something. I also came up with a different framework uh, to solve this problem to automate this. Now, TestWiz, it's an open source framework available on GitHub. And there is a very easy way you can get started. We'll talk about that as well. But what does TestWiz do? It uses Cucumber JVM to specify your test intent. And it's an opinionated framework in that sense, uh, though you can very easily mess it up. But you want to write declarative style of given when then's over here. And by declarative, I mean, because we're talking top of the pyramid, talk about the business language. So, uh, specify your tests using the business language, using the domain terminology. This is not about UI interaction. It's about how to achieve a certain functionality for your users, right? So in this case, you are saying, uh, I'm using uh, APIs to create some data. So very explicitly, I'm calling it out in my test intent. I sign up for a new account via API. It's very clear to whoever reads it, how to uh, how that implementation is happening. The annotations determine which platform is implemented for running these tests. So this test runs on Android, native apps, as well as web. Why? Because application, if one application, if I take Zoom, Zoom is available on web. It is available as Android app, iOS app, Windows app, Mac app. Functionality is still the same, right? You are able to 
login, create meetings, schedule meetings, and so on. Certain functionalities are of course different in each of the applications that you have. But in majority cases, your product is going to have the same functionality across all the platforms. Also, there'll be some deviation based on the implementation path for different platforms. Some platforms are behind the others for different reasons, right? But that is also fine. In general, a business functionality to the user is going to be similar across all the platforms. So with the declarative style, it does not matter which platform it is. It's about the business functionality. In this case, signing up for account via API, login with the fresh setup, being a logged in user, I should be able to start a meeting. Then chat should be disabled. It doesn't matter which platform I run this on, but if you write the test in this fashion, Internally in the framework, you will be able to implement it on Android or web as in this particular case. Because business functionality is the same, just the last point of interaction with your application is different from an end user perspective. Now this approach solves many different purposes. One, you do not have to duplicate your test intent across multiple different areas. Right? I don't want a separate test for Android, separate for web, another for web a mobile web, another for iOS and so on. I'm going to have one test intent, which is going to manage all of this. Second, I'm calling out data creation aspect also very clearly. Third, when you run this test, automatically this becomes your executing documentation. Any new member that comes onto the team, this becomes a very good documentation to say, read these scenarios. Of course, there's some basic information you would need to share with them in terms of domain terminology and so on, but they would be able to, with minimal inputs, be able to understand what uh, is uh, the functionality of that application. And then when you dig deeper into the implementation, they will know how the actual interaction with each application also happens. Okay. So in my opinion, this brings out a very strong way for implementing tests the right way, which also helps as a self-executing documentation of the product. The clear and concise business functionality is platform agnostic. In some cases, as I said, you would handle that differently in code if the implementation is behind or ahead of certain uh, different platforms, okay? But that should not make you have to just create different set of tests. Now, the way this is implemented, this is a very quick uh, architecture diagram of uh, this or the structure of the framework. You author your tests on the top using Cucumber JVM to make it clear and precise. The implementation comes up in the business layer, which is your domain functionality, how to implement that. Domain functionality, which is just a step mapping into code, Gherkin mapping into code, right? It doesn't have any interaction logic. It has domain functionality implementation and orchestration. If I have to schedule a meeting. What is the orchestration that needs to happen to schedule a meeting? That is what it talks about. It will have the assertions and verifications because the rules are at the business layer. These are business rules that we are talking about. Actual implementation of the step depends on the platform. That is where it goes to pages and screens. There'll be different pages or screen objects that you would have for web, different for Android, different for iOS and so on because that is a last mile interaction with the actual device or the browser. And of course, reporting, uh, it integrates with report portal. It has got some rich reports, Cucumber reports for feature tracking as well, or feature coverage rather. Uh, it has visual AI integration with Apply tools. It can run on local devices or browsers or in Docker containers or in device farm. All those capabilities are automatically built in over here. Various different ways how you can separate the environment configuration, data configuration, that automatically makes it uh, possible to run the same test in different environments because all that isolation is already created. The data isolation that we talk about. And you can just simply provide the environment annotation to say this is for prod, this is also implemented for QA environment, this is also there for dev. Automatically that environment data, environment configuration will be picked up for execution of the tests, okay? and many other utilities uh, are built in as part of. So this will provide uh, uh, you the way to implement for web, mobile web, Android, iOS, Windows applications as well, and API. 
the tool sets used are selenium web driver with java for the browser interactions apm uh, for android and windows and for web service it is uh, unirest uh, library similar to unirest rather okay how does this really work the first part is actually very similar uh, like a regular implementation that you would have right so if i run this test i'm not going to do live demo in this case i'll just uh, show how it is working so the test is implemented over here this is running for uh, web right now the browser launches the uh, it resizes does whatever it's required this is using a geomeet type application which is similar to zoom uh, to implement whatever is required right and now where the test starts and completes so this is very straightforward implementation for web similar thing will be there for android as well the only thing that changes is again the annotation is there on the test i'm running the same test only a in a command line parameter changes to say which platform i want to run the test against in this case there were two emulators running it picked up one of the emulators and the test runs on that same business functionality running on a different platform okay and the test completes in that uh, way so this part is very straightforward nothing really magical or rocket science about uh, the framework so far the key thing that i want to highlight is the test execution though there's a lot of configuration details that is possible which is there in, in your code or rather in property files and json's you can override any of that information from command line and that is very important because that way you do not have to make changes to code you can simply override from command line and run different set of tests which means if you want to give these tests to developers to say run it this test fails this is where the problem is that you will be able to figure it out it becomes very easy they don't have to understand the details of the framework and so on just run a command you'll be able to see that also because it is command line driven it automatically integrates very seamlessly with your ci tool as well whichever ci tool it might be because it is a command line that you need to provide over here. okay the approach that is taken for this uh, it's important because you want to run the test on local the same way as in ci so what i showed as a demo was running it from local because it's a command line interface it can automatically run in ci also accordingly okay now so far it was regular automation right why did i have to create that it's because of this different category of complexity that can exist in your applications we live in a hyper connected world it's great to be back in person but what if we had to do this over zoom or teams how do you think zoom as a product as a company how are they testing their application there is no value in me just launching zoom and testing if i can create a meeting schedule a meeting start a meeting there is some value but the real value is when multiple people can join and interact and do screen share and so on right mute unmute and whatever other functionality that is there how do you test those because the value is in when multiple people come together to interact so we live in a hyper connected world in that world we are doing a lot of collaboration and interactions with each other and these can happen on different platforms how do you automate such scenarios that is the complexity we are talking about so the real user scenarios we understand but real user scenarios on multiple uh, platforms on multiple devices using multiple apps different types of apps that could be a very interesting scenario which at some point you want to test so earlier we spoke about the automation pyramid the top of the pyramid you separate into two parts right lower part of the top was about the stubbed environment we are stubbing out externally the top portion was integrated the top portion of that top where maximum complexity is there where you want the fewest number of tests but you want to verify that integration also works fine that is where these multi user multi platform type of scenarios probably come into picture now what does that mean let's look at the uh, an example right so we've got multiple users on these platforms so taking zoom itself right or geomeet android ios windows mac os web mobile web six different platforms how do you automate that even linux for that matter you might have no for that 
So how does TestWiz solve that problem? Because it is Gherkin based, you can create your own nomenclature. That nomenclature, the way I chose to do it is in this fashion. First of all, the annotation changes. It is not just about Android or web anymore. We are saying it's a multi-user Android. So what does that mean? Guest is on Android. Host is also on Android and they can send a file to each other over uh, chat in the meeting. Okay, complex scenario, right? You need two people in the meeting. Only then you can say, uh, send a file across to them. If I'm the only person in the meeting, chat is disabled. So to test sending a file, I need another person in the meeting as well. So what we are saying is host signs up using API. We are not relying on existing data, which makes it very powerful. Whichever environment it might be, this application allowed that capability for that matter. Using API, we are creating a user, logging in, and then the host is coming on Android, right? So the persona is mentioned in the step who is doing the action. And where is that user? Where is Android? Host is coming on Android. Guest joins from Android itself. Okay. And then host should be able to get to chat window. Host sends a file. Guest should see the chat message on its chat window. Reading this, we sort of understand. Yes, of course, it can be written better. But you sort of understand the functionality, what that orchestration needs to be. So in this case, if you see over here, the command is still the same, right? I'm just giving it config file. And config file I'm giving mostly to as a um, reference over here. You would not need to give this. This can come directly from your configuration. If you need to override, you can override it from command line. But I'm telling it what scenario to run. So I can run a subset of scenarios from command line. If I don't give anything, everything will run. So I can specify which scenarios to run over here. And I'm just telling it run the test. Now what this means is, here's a test where it's multi-user Android. This is for a single app. So we see host is there on Android and guest is also on Android. To keep the demo shorter, I've just, uh, I'm just going to run the first two steps. So again, I run the command line over here, two emulators running. Automatically, the first emulator is picked up, which was the first one at host signs up using API and logs in. Over here, the host is logging in. Once login is completed, he gets into the meeting. Then the second user, the guest is also going to come and join the same meeting. So the framework now allows capability to share that meeting ID with the guest. The guest is going to launch the application on the next device available and join that same meeting. So it's joining the same meeting that was just created by the host. And when guest joins the meeting, now you can see on the screen, there are multiple people in the meeting. And now you can continue with that orchestration. So in very simplistic terms, what TestWiz has done is it has given you the capability of saying, associating a persona with a device. And by specifying the persona in each of the step, TestWiz switches the context to that device and executes the test there. Internally, it provides a lot of flexibility that you need to do. So for example, when host signs up and starts a meeting, sharing of that meeting ID with the next uh, persona, it enables uh, such capabilities for you. So as an implementation side, you can leverage those two to do that. Now, if I run the same test for web, okay? In this case, it is multi-user Android web. Host is on Android, but guest is coming on web, which is possible, right? Users can join from any different platform. All I needed to do over here is change the annotation and the personas that is there. So in this case, again, the first device is picked up by the host. Meeting is started. And now guest is coming from the browser. Again, it is going to take the same, uh, the newly created meeting ID to log in over there and the validations proceed accordingly. You see there are two participants over there in the meeting. So the two-factor authentication that you were referring to, right? It's a possible scenario because you might be on a web for 2FA is coming on your mobile device, which is connected to the machine when the test is running. 
you will be able to write a test or uh, part portion of the test to open the messages app, get the token and uh, message of whichever app, get the token and pass it on to the implementation. It is possible to do that. Of course, it means you need to have a device connected. It might need a SIM card or whatever, right? But that's a different complexity. But that could potentially be a way to automate that, uh, this as well. Okay. So the multi-platforms is also something that we spoke about, right? You are on different platforms and you want to interact as part of it. That is not the only thing that is uh, there though. There could be a different level of uh, complexity, even more for that matter. There could be multi-app scenarios. Multi-app, the 2FA is again a good multi-app scenario, right? Where your product is something else, but you're opening a different app to uh, do some interactions or get information to pass it on. So multi-app scenario, a good example could be we use the Amazon app to uh, place an order. This is a very simplistic view of uh, e-commerce, by the way. Amazon will kill me if I show uh, such a simple example in that sense. But you place an order. When the order is processed, eventually it goes reaches the local warehouse. Local warehouse, they'll use different tools, uh, uh, applications to process the order, get the uh, items that you have ordered, send it to the local delivery station. From there, uh, the delivery person will use a different application to take those items, bring it to you. And when uh, either you can confirm the order is received or something, in their app, they will say order delivered. In your app, immediately you see the order status is delivered. There are many different applications that go through this flow. Now, of course, there are much more easier ways to automate this. You can make API calls and whatever to simulate this end-to-end -end scenario. But I hope this sort of explains there could be different reasons why you have different applications involved in your end-to-end uh, -end validation as well. I like the 2FA part better. I'm going to use that uh, for the next time I talk about this. It's more realistic than this uh, overly simplified example. But with this case, there could be different uh, another problem as well, right? Or another uh, solution as well. Not solution. Another scenario as well. We want to test with different versions of your application. So again, Zoom is a good example. You've got two different versions of Zoom client. You want to make sure they are still compatible based on certain core changes that might have happened. You want to make sure they are still able to be compatible. Like for example, a new feature that is added, a new emoji library in the new version of Zoom compared to the old emoji library. How is that going to work? You want to test that mapping for whatever reason, right? How are you going to do that? So you could have it uh, like this. You could create your own scenario Again, create your own nomenclature. In this case, I'm saying again, who is the persona? There could be n number of personas for that matter, right? Guest one, guest two, depending on how good is your infrastructure to support multiple instances of browsers or devices, or how good your license is to say how many different devices you want from a cloud farm for that matter, a device farm and all, right? So the limitations are uh, logistical in that sense, but your scenario could still specify all the different personas required to interact with that. You could create a nomenclature saying that which version of the application you want to use for each of those personas. So in this case, host is on latest version of Android app. Guest one is on the older version of the Android app and guest two is coming on the web. And these three different platforms, they are interacting each other to solve a different problem or simulate a different scenario. You could do it in that fashion as well. And uh, this is how it's Gherkin. You create your own nomenclature. I'll show you internally how that really works. I'll show that to you. Um, so in this case, you've got three different personas coming on different platform or uh, app versions. Two emulators running again. In this case, the app seems to be the same, but actually it's using different versions of the GeoMeet app on both the devices. So host has come from uh, the latest app. Meeting has started. Guest one comes on the older version of the GeoMeet app. As I said, uh, it's not really visible that the app is different, but it is in this case. It is able to connect. And then now there are two people in the meeting. Then the second guest comes in on the web. When the second guest logs in again, using the same meeting ID that was just created. Now you see there are three participants in the meeting. 
and now you are able to continue with the interaction. You could also create these personas at a different point in time, right? Where you want to say, for example, older chat messages should not be seen. So two users have joined in, they've sent some chat messages with visibility, everyone. Then the third person joins in, but only the newer messages should be visible. If that is your application functionality, you could validate that as well. Otherwise it will be difficult to validate these types of scenarios. Okay. Any questions so far about it? So how does this work? So, as I said, this is just Gherkin, right? You can create whatever nomenclature to do the mapping. Internally, what is important is how does TestWiz really manage the personas and the drivers? In a very simplified uh, view, that is what TestWiz does. It manages the drivers for you so that you don't have to do that. With the drivers, it means it manages the devices and the browsers for you. You don't have to worry about that part. So, what it is really doing is it is telling uh, TestWiz to create a driver for the persona for the platform that is provided. And internally, TestWiz will manage that. So create whatever nomenclature that makes sense in context of your product. The key thing is the scenario has to be descriptive in the declarative language. So it is platform agnostic. The first time you need to use a particular persona or allocate a device or a browser, that is when you need to call TestWiz and there are different types of APIs for this to create the driver with different information required. And that will be able to create that uh, driver for you and manage it internally. Over here, you are saying which is the persona and what is the platform. So if it is Android, persona is host. There is an Android driver created associated with the host persona. And that is what is going to be used going forward. So in the next step, yep. Yeah, APM driver for, to interact with the Android app. Yes. So in this example over here, right? Then I ran this. So host is on Android, guest is also on Android, and guest two is on web. So whenever I say host, in this case, the uh, device on the right was allocated to the host. In subsequent steps, when I say host should be able to get to chat window, SWIS will automatically run those actions on the device allocated to host. Otherwise, how will your test know which device to work with? Yes. Implementation is your uh, thing. Uh, so again, I'll, I'll uh, talk about that, right? So this Gherkin is just to indicate what is the scenario. And you get clarity what persona is doing what actions, what business functionality is going on. When you go internally uh, to the implementation, now that the driver is created, actual implementation of signing in and starting the meeting is again code that you would write. Okay. Simple Java code that is there. At some point, when you say sign in, it is going to get the data, test data from your test data uh, files based on the environment that you have. And then you will say, Okay, I need to go to sign in screen and sign in. How do I get to the sign in screen for the platform? When I go to sign in screen, it says based on the platform, what is the instance of the screen that I need to return? So the business layer is platform agnostic because over here, it is just about how to implement this functionality of sign in. It is a fact. It is a fact, right? But typically we have a test intent and directly we talk with page objects as a factory. We've introduced a layer in between called the business layer. That is what is able to create an abstraction between any type of platform uh, that you want to run your tests on. In general as well, the page object factory or the page uh, object model has big limitations as your framework needs to scale. There's a lot of duplication that happens across it. The assertions get mixed up in the test and in the page objects. It's a big chaos as your framework grows. So creating that middle layer of business layer, your orchestration happens over there, assertions happen over there, 
there should be no assertions in your test method there should be no assertions in your page objects because page objects are dummy objects they just do the actions that you are telling it or they will try to retrieve the information that you are asking for it doesn't have any logic in it the logic is there in your business layer because business layer knows uh, when i sign in i should be signed in if there is a false uh, incorrect credentials method that you have you will say sign uh, try to sign in with incorrect credentials your business layer will say sign in and assert i am not signed in i am still on the login page your page object doesn't have that context correct because it's a factory and you are doing a single interaction from business layer right now the there could be cases when certain functionality is not implemented in platforms depending on that case i typically uh, say in most cases i would say throw a not implemented exception from this never return nulls if you return nulls that means you have to keep handling for nulls and checking for nulls throw a not implemented exception so if android is behind and it doesn't have a get signed in welcome message if i end up calling this i'll get a not implemented exception so i know that this is an expected uh, behavior of the application right and the assertions are over here as well okay. the implementation of these are going to be screen specific again no assertions over here but in the screens is where we will have visual validations so again as a implementer i know if i am saying get signed in welcome message method is called i want to do a visual validation over here because the message might be there the text might be there it might be of a wrong color wrong font size it might be in the wrong location it could be any problem or this locator might be invalid it might have changed i don't know but i'll still be able to do a visual validation of that screen before i get a not implemented exception from here so i'll be able to still do the full validation of that screen at this point okay so implementation wise this is again not rocket science anyway it's open source you'll be able to take a look at it the thought over here is really about if your application needs that complexity of interacting with different versions of the applications or different platforms typically it is thought of as a very challenging thing how to manage that testwiz will allow you to do that in a very easy way plus you get integration with report portal you get visual validation out of the box all you need is a api key you would add that and uh, you are able to do visual validation and everything is config driven this is java okay. so for devices uh, there is a capabilities uh, json that you would give and there is also configurations that you would be able to provide to say how you want the basic default execution to happen and all of this information is overridable uh, can be overridden from command line there is also apply tools configuration over here your test data is also available uh, test data and environment json so for different environments uh, your urls and everything can be specified so environment configuration is separate from your test data configuration so simply by saying Oh, where is that feature file gone? Simply by saying over here, what is the version of the app or rather what environment it is. In this case, this is prod. Maybe it is also supported for local or dev environment. You need to have just configurations for these. From command line, you will specify environment, what environment to run with, and you will be able to execute your test automatically on that. From a reporting side, have you used Report Portal before? Yeah. Very powerful reporting tool. It's available. Uh, it's an open source uh, tool uh, available for free that you can use on local environments. You can literally set up that reporting server in your environment in five minutes using Docker, for example. Very easy to get started, but it is very powerful. So we use Report Portal internally. And what report portal does is it maps the cucumber scenarios very nicely over there in the same nested fashion. 
So in the uh, feature file, you will get all scenarios, inside scenarios. It's going to be a nested uh, hierarchy that is there for all the steps. And in that, you'll get all the details uh, logged in as well. Along with that, you'll be able to see screenshots captured. We also capture the browser logs or the device logs automatically to report portal. The intent is these tests are very expensive to run. Many a times you get flaky tests because of some change in the environment or something, the tests fail. You don't want to rerun them just to figure out what went wrong. Many a times when you rerun, it will pass as well, right? You don't want to miss out on what has happened. So capturing the test logs, the device logs, or the browser logs, including screenshots, you will be able to get maximum information over here. Hopefully you do not need to rerun the test just to figure out what went wrong. The bigger advantage of report portal is also these widgets and it uses ML to learn uh, from this. When the test fail, you tag the test. What is the reason of the failure? And you enable the auto analysis of course. Subsequently, when you run the test, if the test has failed, it will learn and say, based on the past decisions you've taken, what is the category of these failures? So analysis also becomes much more easier for you. That is very valuable. And it has a widget to identify flaky tests. So tests which have passed earlier, failed later and all, it will be able to identify and give you out of the box. So you don't have to worry about figuring out which of your tests are flaky or not. It can tell you out of the box for it. Okay, very powerful. We've already spoken about Appy Tools. It has Appy Tools integration. Uh, it, it works for this example, right? Host is on Android 10, guest one was on Android 11. These were the two different versions of my emulator. We see that over here. And for web, it also uses the ultra fast grid. So automatically for web, you're getting validation for four different platforms out of the box without doing anything else. You get all that information for free away. TestWiz is not yet supporting the execution cloud and self healing. That part is not yet there, but it's easy to add if required. There's also capability to generate functional coverage. Now, because we are using Gherkin uh, Cucumber and using annotations, when you run the test, based on the annotations, you can generate this heat map uh, in form of tag statistics. And you can exclude certain types of tags from here based on, again, your uh, custom. A requirement. And from this, you can say, when I run my full regression suite, we can get a sense of how many tests are covering different components. So you would add tags on the test to say, okay, this is for, so already over here, we've got invalid login or login, right? So this essentially is login. You'll have something about meeting, chat, share screen, whichever the modules, components, functional areas of our application, create tags for it. Run the test you will get this cucumber report generated with this heat map. And over here, you'll be able to say, what is the frequency of running tags, uh, different type of tags? Are you focusing on some functionality which is less important than the other? You'll be able to get a sense of understanding over here. It's a functional coverage, not code coverage. That is screens, right? That is screens, that is not functionalities, right? So that is not uh, there. I think looking at it from a screen perspective might not be as valuable. The other set of features that we've added recently is automatic logging. Many a times you need to start, keep adding log statements. So very recently I've integrated in TestWiz aspect J. So automatically you'll be able to log all the public methods. Again, this is controllable for you, how you want to do this automatic logging. So you can very easily do that as well. You don't need to gen, uh, add explicit log statements just to get the verbosity to understand your execution flow. So, <clears throat> talking about uh, integration and your tools with open source tools. It's a wrapper on top of open source tools and commercial tools as well. Apple Tools is commercial, right? Yeah. So, it's an integration of that. But, uh, this, uh, this report? Yes. Yeah. Test Viz. Test this is a cucumber HTML report. Oh, report portal, this one. Yeah, this is report portal. Yes. So all you need to do is specify a report portal properties file, and that's about it. So have you done any similar integrations with C sharp? No. 
this is implemented in Java. Yes, yeah, well, we use a lot of C sharp issues. Okay. So Microsoft has a big footprint. Okay. Even up in Australia, hmm. Okay. So um, let's just connect separately and see uh, what it really means to integrate accordingly. No, no. So this is about implementing the test, which is in Java. That is not in C sharp. And it is not integrating with your application, right? This is a complete test framework itself. You can make the API calls with any um, of your product APIs as you want, because it has API capability as well. Yeah. Yes. It's open source. Yes. Test, exactly. Test Swiss is implemented in Java, but if you want to implement the similar concept on your side, you could take reference from Java implementation and implement it on your own. This code is all, uh, all open source, right? You could implement it in similar fashion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if only it was that easy. If only it was that easy. We can use chat GPT to change the cases. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, no, there is a way. Uh, maybe there's a easy way to do that integration on the C sharp side to enable it, but I have not thought about it. But we can explore that first. So, uh, the unique capabilities over here is mainly from the multi-user, multi-device, but also it allows you to execute on multiple platforms, right? Even if it's a single persona, running it across multiple platforms, it provides a very easy way for you to do that. And it brings in everything that you really need for a framework as a built-in capability. Reporting, log, auto-logging, visual testing is optional. If you want it, you would use it. Otherwise, it's a disabled. It will take screenshots, it will have extensive logs, and it everything is there in a local directory uh, as well, right? So under target, it's date timestamp based. Again, these are very small things which you would have in your frameworks as well. This provides it out of the box. So this rich reports is where uh, you will see that Cucumber HTML report. Then for every scenario, there's a separate folder which will have its own device logs, browser or device logs. It will have screenshots over here along with it. So even if you just run it locally, you have all the rich information. You can capture that, archive it, or share it with anyone. It's all available over there. For you. So that becomes very powerful. Also, it can run with any of the device farms that you want. Simple configuration changes. Uh, that works fine. We've covered this part. The tech stack uh, is important. So if you have to implement this on c -sharp side, for example, right? Cucumber JVM, you'll have a similar thing for .NET. Oh, spec mat, no, spec flow, spec flow will be there. No, APM test distribution, it's again a Java library, which manages uh, APM and the devices for you. And that takes a big chunk of responsibility away. Uh, I contribute to that as well. Uh, but uh, that is something that you need to see if you are doing device management, how would you do that if ATD is not there? Especially now with APM 2.0 and the device plugins, it can get a little bit tricky if you have not used that, but uh, this allows you to integrate easily. APM Selenium Web Driver. Now we support APM 2.0 Selenium Web Driver 4. Report Portal, Apply Tools is also there. And that's the build tool. So there's defaults. There are property files which will make you customize your execution, which can again be overridden by environment variables. So how do you proceed if you want to try it out, right? One is, of course, uh, to use it as a library, as a dependency. Just use getting started with TestWiz. All the sample tests that are there in TestWiz, it's there in getting started with TestWiz. Only difference is it uses TestWiz as a dependency. So you clone that repo, 
remove the sample tests and put in your tests and start implementing it. Everything is available out of the box. Of course, you can contribute to test with like C sharp. I think that's a very interesting thing, right? It will probably be a separate version of test with, but that is something that we could collaborate and make it happen if that is of interest. But again, it's open source. So contributions always welcome and required as well on that. Okay. So yeah, that's what test is really about. Uh, it makes it very easy to implement without having to reinvent the wheel. But there'll be many similar as well, probably that are out there that you could use. But this is a good way uh, to think about the multi-users, multi-platforms and a full integration. So right now the documentation is on the GitHub page itself. So there is getting started with TestWiz and TestWiz. So right now everything is there in the readmes and uh, we've got a lot of uh, documentation here, but the next, my next objective is in the coming months is to create these short video snippets and better documentation to get started. So readme pages is right now the source and of course reach out to me. This is a functional testing tool, right? No, so it's going to use Selenium or APM to do your functional automation. If you want to do API performance, Right now, again, it uses Unirest Java. So it's a regular API testing tool. It's not going to be able to do the load testing type of capabilities or give you the reports that are going to help in that sense. Gatling, I think is a good tool to use for API uh, load testing, performance testing, but that is not integrated here. But of course you could use the tool to do whatever you want in that sense, right? It is possible. I know back in the days, uh, about 10, 12 years ago, probably, I was testing an auction site where we had to actually load up 200 browsers to simulate different clients to um, run the auction. We got beefy servers, started up 200 browser instances on them, connected to the same auction, and the script did all that or orchestration. It needs a different thought process. You cannot say switch to browser one, click here, switch to browser two, click here. It's going to be a functional test. It's not a performance test. If you want to simulate load, then you need to use the tools to do very different type of thing, multi-threading and uh, high-speed interactions, high-paced interactions rather. Yeah, it does. See, Apple tools that eyes.open method, if you remember, right? It takes the driver object. Whichever way the driver works, it's going to work. Now, there'll be some nuances over there. You need to ensure your tool is going to do the interactions properly. So if you click on login and you want to do a validation on that uh, next page, your tool needs to ensure that next page is loaded correctly before doing a validation, right? So the interactions you need to control. Once your page is in a state of stability, you will do the validation. And at that point also, if the screen is not loaded correctly, of course, Aptitools will report there's something wrong. Aptitools also has capability to wait and uh, add delays or whatever, but then that will apply it across the board uh, in some ways. But again, we can work with you to tune it accordingly. Yeah. One question. Do you have a, um, a trial license? For Aptitools? Yeah, no, of course. You just go to aptitudes.com, sign up for a free trial. It's a lifetime free account. The only difference is it's small, um, smaller capabilities, right? Rather smaller volume of tests you can run per month. But most of the features are enabled on it. So you can definitely try it out. And what we suggest is, of course, sign up for a free account. We've got Test Automation University. A lot of co different courses related to automation there, including visual testing. So you can take self-paced courses on that as well to learn. But if at some point you think it might be valuable to you, reach out to Swaroop, reach out to me, and we'll help get you set up for a POC license and work with you to make sure 
it is actually going to give you the value that you're looking for. Overload. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's very heartening to me. Swarup, next trip confirm. <laughs> <laughs> Great. That's really good to hear. Thank you. Thank you very much.